Well, it's a pleasure to sit down with Janice Stein, the outgoing director and founder of the Monk School of Global Affairs, on the day that you're cleaning out Absolutely. your office. Moving offices as we speak. It's real. It's real. It's um, real. The Monk School has gone from seven centers and programs to 40 under your watch. How does that feel? I mean, let's talk about the journey a little bit. It, it actually feels wonderful. Uh, we started very small. Um, and what really changed was not even so much the numbers of uh, programs and centers, but the fact that we were able to build a coherent whole where people across boundaries out of their centers and began to work with people that they normally wouldn't meet. Uh, we went from there to becoming a school with our own graduate programs and undergraduate programs. So if we think how short a time, 15 years, mm -hmm. so much has changed. That's true. The MGA, I mean, is your baby per yes, se, right? Is. Um, yes, it is. I mean, is, is it growing the way that you had hoped? Yes, very, very much. Um, you know, there are always wrinkles in everything yes. and there are always things we can make better every year. Um, and I'm all constantly listening to the students, how can we make this a better experience mm -hmm. for you? We, our applications have quadrupled since we started. Uh, it's now the most competitive program in this country to get into mm -hmm. at the master's level. We are attracting international students and there are actually universities now in the United States and elsewhere that are creating MGAs. Mm -hmm. uh, we were the first we had our board meeting and one of our board members from New York said, you're the disruptor in this <laughs> space. Well, there's no higher compliment to me. I was going to say, you honest. probably like that a little bit. I love that. That was the best thing anybody could have said to me. Janice, the real game changer for the Masters of Global Affairs program was the $35 million donation from Peter yes. Monk, of course. Yes. I mean, what went through your mind when you saw that kind of a donation, uh, the largest in the U of T history from yes. a single donor? I really believe that the private sector has to play a larger role in Canadian society. If you look at philanthropy, for example, in the United States, mm -hmm. uh, there's a long tradition of giving to not only to educational institutions, but generally um, to the arts. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have that in Canada in the same way. That's partly a function of our being dependent on government for funding. Mm -hmm. So I was thrilled. I really was thrilled because I knew what it would enable us to create. Uh, mostly it brought, it did really uh, two critical things. First of all, it allowed us to bring in great faculty. And I look at the faculty that we've hired. We're now 12 who are either part-time or full-time with us. Every one of them uh, is pushing the envelope. Second thing the donation allowed us to do was to build the infrastructure of the program. So our internship program. When we originally proposed the MGA to the university, we were met with a lot of skepticism. You will never get, we were 40 to start with, you will never get 40 global internships. Well, we have 100 now. <laughs> I can see the smile on your face. <laughs> <laughs> we're still growing. Uh, people are knocking on our doors mm -hmm. now to be partners. We have partners in our capstone course. Yeah, the funding, I mean, has been phenomenal. Like, yes. us as students have experienced that, I guess. Um, but there are, you know, critics of Peter Monk. I mean, how do you ensure that what happens in the classroom here is um, detached, I guess, from donor influence or political undertow? Peter Monk is actually an ideal donor. Hmm. He totally gets the independence of the university. And I can say um, that not once in the 15 years has he ever intervened to complain about research that was being done by faculty here mm -hmm. or about a student conference, so, or to ask that certain research be done here. What he has said over and over and over is, I want a really great school. I want this school not only to be the best in Canada, I want it to be among the very best in the world. The core here is academic freedom mm -hmm. and the right to explore and any issue, any issue that students or faculty want to work on and that we've had. Mm -hmm. um, and so from that perspective, that, that's a bedrock value. Yeah. 
Yeah, if you, uh, but there was never a threat to it here. So we have a few questions from students of yours. Yeah. Uh, Saul Syed at MGA2 asks, how do you keep up to date with current events? What newspapers do you read, and how often a day do you read them? Well, um, I get up very, very early in the morning <laughs> and spend about an hour and a half reading before the day starts. The Globe, yep. the New York Times, the Financial Times, from London, the Guardian. We're looking for the, the global news, but that's fairly broad. It's not just what's called the international news because it's global health, yep. it's um, environment, it's global education, it's security, so it ranges across quite a broad you know, range. Mm -hmm. Then I go to the Middle East and I read al Ahram from Egypt. I read um, uh, a Lebanese newspaper every day because that's kind of at the epicenter of a lot of cross currents. Mm -hmm. And I read Haaretz from Israel. So by the time the day starts, I've read seven, looking for whatever is really important. But my secret indulgence is I get the New York Times delivered to my house Ooh. in print. And at the end of the day, I read the uh, science section, uh, <laughs> art sections. Um, you explore the, more of the topics. The cooking section, believe ah. it or not, which I love. And my favorite part of the New York Times is the art and design section. Interesting. So at the end of the day, when the day's over, that's the great pleasure in life is to sit down and read <laughs> just for fun. That's great. Um, Eddie Kawuya, MGA1, asks, did you have a childhood hero or model that inspired you to get into global affairs? Actually, no. Hmm. Um, I, as a child, my, one of my earliest memories um, as a child was seeing, I, I must have been barely reading, I must have been, you know, just beginning to read, and these big black headlines, Korea goes to war. Yeah. And I thought to myself, that's crazy. Why are they doing this? And I remember asking my mother, why are these people killing each other? And from then on, I was just interested, you know, why do people kill each other? Is there a better way to resolve bitter differences and killing each other. And that started a lifelong interest um, in the causes of war, alternatives to war, and how you can build security that is not as violent as what I saw. Uh, Stephen Toop is coming in here January 1st. Of course, he he's, uh, I guess, the former president of UBC. Yes. Coming here January 1st. Oh, I mean, it took a while to find the fit, right, for the yes. Monk School? Yes. Um, what do you hope is the vision and, I mean, the strengths of, of Stephen going forward? Well, you know, it's going to be Stephen's vision, which, but Stephen um, is among our most experienced leaders, academic leaders in this country. He's been the president of UBC, he's been the dean of a law school, he's been the president of a foundation. Secondly, Stephen is deeply consultative, so yes. Stephen will lead, but he will do so by talking to everybody, students and faculty, uh, about where the Monk School should go mm -hmm. over the next five to ten years. Uh, and thirdly, I have utter confidence in three things that Stephen brings uh, to the Monk School. And I'm, I'm quite honest, I said this was my baby. <laughs> I wasn't going to just let go unless yeah. um, I was utterly persuaded that the next uh, that the next leader would make it much stronger and much better than it currently is. So Stephen, beyond all the things on the CV that Stephen brings to this, Stephen brings three things. One, a deeply ingrained set of ethics and values, which is core. You can't do this job really without that. And he has that in spades. Secondly, a powerful intellect. He's so smart and so well educated. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, he's ambitious for the school and excited. He recognizes, as he's told me over and over, that he thinks the Monk School has a unique contribution to make mm -hmm. in this country and globally. Excellent. So all music to my ears. <laughs> and I'm, I'm actually looking forward to watching what happens here. Mm -hmm. I will continue to teach here and do research here. And I, I, it's just going to be a pleasure to sit back. Is it? Is it emotional, though, Janice? I mean, you're yes. cleaning out, you're cleaning out yes. your, your yes. office today. I mean, it is emotional. Of course it's emotional. You know, uh, 15 years of your life. Um, so 
you feel pride, but you, there's a certain wistfulness um, out letting go, which is all too human. Uh, it says, well, I could have done more, which is all too yeah. human. Uh, all of those emotions, but all of it tempered by the fact that uh, Stephen is so welcoming that it's not as if I'm going to close the door on my office and leave and have no <laughs> connection with a place that I frankly love. Yeah. That's, so that, that, that's honest. So what is next? Like, Where will we find Janice Stein in the world? <laughs> and the big question, is retirement ever a real word for you? No. No? no. Doesn't exist? No. no. <laughs> it's really not in my plans. I, I can't imagine what that, will be, you know, what that would be like. Obviously, at some point, you just get too old, yeah. right? And you can't do it anymore. But uh, so for me, the metric will be, is my energy declining? Can I give um, what's necessary? You know, if you're teaching, can you go all out yeah. in the classroom? And if you can't, then you shouldn't be teaching anymore. So it will, that day will come, but I can't see it. Um, I'm going to teach in the fall. Oh, you are? Yep. Uh, because that class, I think, is an important class and there's, that's really, again, my course. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to do that. I'm going to do research. Um, I've got a wonderful schedule uh, till the end of May, doing all kinds of interesting things in Europe, the United States, and the Middle East. Um, and then I will probably <laughs> pick when I've had a little brain rest, right, and allowed it to renew itself a bit and read a little bit. I'll probably pick one or two things That's great. that I care about because I really did and do care about the Monk School and about the students and the faculty here. It's a wonderful place. It is. <laughs> special. It's special. It is very special. Janice, thank you for your time. Oh, you're so Appreciate welcome. Appreciate you and thank you for your legacy on this school, this community, and uh, the country. Pleasure. Janice Dyde, outgoing director and founder of the Monk School of Global Affairs.